Wow. Okay. Okay. Good stuff. Cool. I'm happy. Alright everyone, hello and welcome back to another episode on Cross Out with me, Spacefish. And, uh, well, welcome back to our wedge build. Now, I don't think I'm actually really gonna focus on changing much of anything on this build today, as, well, you know, it's been going quite well for me. It's just been rather efficient, it's been rather enjoyable, I freely somewhat like the whole process. So, uh, we're gonna probably keep most of this as is for the time being, except for the fact that we, uh, did in the last episode actually order some new boosters. So I hope that the second one's actually made it our way too, and indeed it has. So that will be the one thing that we will actually change out today, and, uh, we'll just see how much of a performance difference it actually gives us, and I hope that it's gonna be, uh, nice and effective and make a good bunch of a change for us. But another thing that I actually wanna look at, and that we're maybe quickly gonna look at first is our PvE build, because, well, honestly, this thing we haven't really changed in quite a while at this point, and, uh, you will, uh, be able to see all oh, this stuff is still kind of crazy. Now, we did actually put the new radiator on in the last episode. Um, but the one thing that I would actually like to do real quick to this boy right here is uh, upping the power score above 4K. Because you can see we're at 3,990. And uh, there is always a bunch of raids where we can actually join from a 4K power score onwards, but we are always just barely, barely below that. So let's just quickly go to the build menu, um, and then we can just maybe scope out like some part options and see if we can't upgrade it. I kind of sort of wonder, for example, you know, given that we've already got two of these steerable wheels here, if we cannot just actually uh, put those on increase the power score a bit more that way. What's the difference here again? Uh, we've got more tonnage bonus from it. We've got the same power drawback from it and uh, durability is higher and we get more power score crucially. So maybe worth just putting on unless you know that has some random implications as to the usability of the build. But I think we should be fine. So let's just take the front two wheels off and you know it would be nice to actually upgrade all of these wheels to kind of up the tonnage and, well, you know, we could probably get rid of a few wheels and a tad bit of length um, through actually upgrading all the wheels because, you know, the increased tonnage will allow us to do so and uh, we would probably be able... Would we be able like this to even lose two wheels? I don't think so. We would probably be above our tonnage limit. Because the thing is that that, of course, somewhat changes our acceleration. But you can see that doesn't quite work yet. So we would need, like, another set of two wheels, basically. Um. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to have another two wheels to actually... Well, two of the better wheels to actually get this going the way we would want it to. Because uh, I think, you know, losing a few wheels here would be very desirable. On the one hand side, it would greatly improve our acceleration, which would be nice. On the other hand side, it would increase the durability of individual wheels, which means we need less wheels in total. And uh, also, it would shorten our wheelbase, which means a bit tighter turning circle at the very least. A little less over-the-top crazy build size. So, you know, all in all, it would be kind of nice to have. And I would really actually like to make that... A reality to be honest do we need this much much protection on our PVE builds given that the bots at the moment don't really do much of anything to us is the question probably and I'm kind of tending to say no to that question but I'm also kind of let's give it a try uh, where's my stats window now hello ah oh, there we go so let's give it a try I'm gonna try that once more um, the thing is, these are steerable. Okay, these are... So we would have to do something like that, which actually seems to barely work. Like, given that we're going to re remove a tad bit of frame back here, or a tad bit. I mean, that's actually quite a significant bit, to be honest. But you could remove two frames there. And we're below the tonnage limit. So that makes the thing shorter, speedier... 
And honestly, that little bit of Vandor we really don't care about, you know. Even if we wanted to, we could probably just put it back here and lose some other bits of weight somewhere. But I think it's totally fine that way. I mean, we've got radiators behind that still that cover us off against some weirdness. I think that's fine. The other thing I actually really want to look at is moving these further out even. Like that. The question is if that's far enough to allow them to turn like this way or respectively. So like inwards. It doesn't really look like it does it. Like these guns are really really long. We'll give it a try, but I'm not too confident it's going to change anything for us. And we can't really put them any further out from that, unfortunately. So, uh... Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Um, maybe offsetting them to the back like that would make things a bit easier. Ah, it's still bumping, though. See the marker right there? It's still slightly bumping in, and I don't think that there's really... Well, that one definitely doesn't work. That one also doesn't work. Hmm. I would love to pick, like, some s different structure type to get things all the way up there, but, um... I would probably have to lose out on durability. There's, I mean, this issue is really thoroughly bothering me, but... Uh... Like, the only idea... I suppose would be having some 90% shootable, like, through shootable structure that kind of extends these gun pots out to the left and right a bit. So something like this small buggy floor. I think that's maybe an option. Like, say we do this, right? And uh, we do that too. And we put this in the middle right here. That would allow us to attach this thing one further out. I'm just kind of hoping that up here the bots are not going to hit me anymore. Because, like, for me, like, in my mind, that's kind of honestly a bit of an issue. So I would then do something like that. And you can see, I think, that that's potentially still not working. Oh, my God. Come on. Come on. Why in the world? Ha. <sighs> Alternatively, I mean, I mean, we can alternatively do that with two of these things. It's just going to keep looking more ridiculous, but it, I kind of just want to make it work. You know, the thing is, I'm not even convinced that my parts up there do need that much HP that I get from the gun mounts themselves. So, probably even just working with these would somewhat work for me, but... Nyeh. I don't know. Does this work in terms of distance? Probably also not, does it? No, so I would uh, probably choose to do things like this in that case, you know. We do one like that, one like that, we remove one of them, and then we uh, attach this to the side. One right here. We could, you know, at least turn it or something. That will probably put the turrets closer to the line of fire, though. Which I'm not convinced I like. Also would have me center that on here somewhat. Which would not really help in terms of turning the turret. So we'll uh, put that back like that. I think that's better. And um, this should be far enough, honestly. If at this point it doesn't work, I'm, uh, I'm going to flip. So let's see. Yeah, you can see there's no more. I think this should work now. So, uh, this doesn't. This does. I'm going to attach one like that. And we're going to attach the other like that. And that's nice and beautiful. And we're still below the tonnage limit. It does look even more weird than it looked before. But it should work better. Which, like, function over form. Especially in terms of my PvE build, I think. Let's go and quickly test that. And then we'll get over to the wedge build as well. Look at that. See, that's what I wanted. Now the turrets don't have to go all the way around like that when, you know, they can just go through here and, you know, their whole range of shootable angles is so much better like that. Now this here is, of course, kind of the danger. But, uh, well, we, we all know that 
this thing hasn't been shot off once by bots. So let's just cross our fingers that that stays that way. Um, different thing. Acceleration. Well, it's still not great. But we're slightly faster. At least it feels like it. And the turning... Oh, wow. Okay, the turning circle is really significantly improved. Look at this. Feels way less boaty at this point. So that's very nice. Very happy with those changes, honestly. I think we're going the right way with that. And we're probably going to aim to make this thing... Actually, we can probably even make it shorter. Let's maybe have a quick look back at these. Ah, so the issue here being that I've got the metal plates so low that I can't actually attach wheels there unless I do this. Now, if I do this, though, that could be an issue, given that I would probably be exposing a generator over here, and indeed I would. Ah, so that's worrying. Very, very worrying indeed. The question being, though, if I was to space this, like, one further out, would it allow me to just put my wheels in them? Well, probably not, because this would be... Actually, this would not be in the way if I just spaced it out one further, would it? Let's try that for a minute. So, if you see what I mean, I'm uh, thinking if I would just use that wall, for example, like that, right? Now, we do something like this. I'd probably have to move this thing over to here to just close the gap and make sure the generator's safe. Put some space out thing like that. If and when I move the wheels... No, it doesn't allow me to. It would have to be even further out, I suppose. Unless this helps, but I don't think so. No. This is thoroughly and nicely in the way. Uh, the generator probably is very much in the way of the wheels anyways, I guess. Hmm. This whole generator topic is annoying. It's like the thing is... Could we realistically somewhat easily put this generator under the hole? We could, couldn't we? Oh, we don't have a fuel tank there or anything. I think this is fixable. Um, let's, before we do this, just kind of save this build where it's at, you know, because I don't want to mess it up too much. Um, we're going to overwrite this. Save. Beautiful. So that's fixed for now. Now we go back to building. We're going to try and, like, move the generator into the frame. The only thing that I'm kind of worried about is that once we take the frame off the vehicle, it's not going to be on the frame anymore or something, so... We'll have to be careful there, but we'll give it a try at least, you know, kind of optimize that a bit more. A lot more building this episode than I thought there was going to be, but I'm starting to get some ideas, especially given that we haven't worked on this thing here so long, I think. It makes sense to revisit it a bit here, so why not? I hope you like that part. So, um, if we put a 1x8 here, the frame itself is connected. Now, I'm going to put a 1x8 on the other side already anyways, just to have it somewhat symmetrical, like that, and um, then I would like to remove this part here, please don't break, whew, okay, okay, I mean that's not sticking out as low as my generator setup on the usual build, which is like that basically, well not quite like that, but you get the point I think, that's quite fine to be honest. I'm quite fine with that. I hope you all are too. That's, that's really decent, I would say. So, uh, let's move this wall back into here. Ooh, please. Why does it have to be this high up now? And what am I stuck on? Oh, they're gone. Okay. Um, this wall's not really in the proper place, is it? Well, that, that thing, neither. Okay, let's move this back, basically. Like this, and uh, oh, we can move that one to there too. To be honest, honestly, we don't even need all these walls anymore. At least one of them I can probably get rid of. Now, um, 
could I please move this to where I want it to be? Thank you. Okay, so this one... This one right here, I think, I want to get rid of. Do I? Or... Or is it this one? Wait, what's the setup over here? Oh, I moved this to the side, didn't I? Yeah, so I guess this one protects like the side of the cabin somehow, which makes some sense. And then this would go right here. Now the thing is, this can actually not go right here, because that's still in the way of the wheels. So I do actually need my spaced out some, what, design. So uh, everything back to where we were? Oh boy. Sorry for that, everyone. I'm uh, getting slightly confused by my actions right here. So what you want to do? No, not quite that. No. Uh, uh, please. There. Okay. That's what we want to do, basically. Then we uh, kind of move this thing one up like that. Or could we... Now this is kind of the question, right? Can we move it to here? Because in theory, I think the wheels should clear it. So either it would be a bit of protection for the wheels, or it's going to be in the way and we just move it. Okay, we move it one up. So that would have to be the plan, huh? At that point, I may as well just get rid of this stuff here. I mean, that just looks weird. Wait, why is this so much more? Is this? I don't know what I did there. Okay, I think we're going to get rid of that then. Going to place that there. Then we can pull up the wheels. No, we can still not... What? What do you mean? Uh, hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. Um, we'll just, you know, make this a little more slim. You know, I don't, I don't think we need a huge ton of tank like we used to have. At least not like that excessive or a ton of tank. Because we were always more than fine with what we had previously, I would say. So we're going to do something like this. Now my question is, if through moving these... What's this in the way here? Oh, that's the cabin. Cabin's in the way of the frame or what? We can probably bring the frame out one more to fix that, I hope. So like that, and then we do that, and then we do that. I think we can very much save like size and weight on this build while keeping it just as effective here. This here is a bit of an issue, because we would have to slightly space that out. So I mean I can theoretically attach the wheel like that, it's not really making a difference in terms of sturdiness. And same thing here. So that way we can, uh, yeah, we can very nicely, very much shorten that there, and I like it, it's beautiful, so we're going to do it, that bar goes back on, but it goes on right, right there, and look at that, we're saving so much size and weight, that's insane, it's beautiful, I'm going to keep doing that, I like where we're going with this. This is a massive change to the PvE build with this, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy with where we're going because I think we haven't paid attention to this build for a very long while now and, well, back when we first put it together for PvE purposes, I really just kind of quickly slapped it together to make sure we had something to go PvE with, but, I mean, look at this. This is literally pretty much the same effectiveness in terms of tank. At so much less weight and so much less unnecessary size, which means way better turning radius and hopefully way better acceleration. Now, the only thing we could probably still do is get rid of the steerable wheels here in the middle and still be good in terms of weight. Look at that. We're so fine. Now we put this thing in the middle and then we can actually, you know, center all the wheels and everything and be happy with life ever after. This goes there. Beautiful. How in the world did I just do... Oh my god, we just lost 300 power score. 
Um, so the goal was getting to 4k, now we're at 3.6 instead of 3.9. And the build is still 10 times better. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, making more, things more efficient is great and everything, but we'll have to think about something for the power score. I think we'll do that on another day, though, because otherwise we'll run out of time today. Um, very happy with this change, though. Very, very, very happy. I hope you all are, too. Um, I would argue that this is quite the improvement to before. Um, I mean, looking at this, for a start, our acceleration is significantly better. Uh, and I mean, you know, the turret turning and everything aside. Then we get this turning radius, which is beautiful, because that's even smaller than it was before, and it feels so much more agile now, it's so much less like a boat. More, you know, more compact, more condensed together, which... Makes a lot of sense to me, especially for that kind of PvE build, and it even, I don't know, I would halfway argue it looks better if it wasn't for the weird looking towers up top, you know, at least it's not like 15 meters long with random spaces in the middle. Okay, beautiful. I, I think that's, uh, that's the way to go for this build. We're definitely going to save that for today. And, uh, well, then we're probably going to get back to it in the next episode in terms of building more, because I think that's probably more potential, especially in terms of hopefully getting the power score up, but I'm very, very happy with that thus far. Now, that said, we wanted to also do something else, which, for one, is adjusting our uh, wedgie boy, and um, also, on the other hand side, um, actually, you know, getting a game or two in at least today, so we can have some fun with that. Um, so let's get rid of these things right here for a minute now, and let's go and grab the new Blastoffs. And, uh, well, then we're going to see how those fare for us. I'm really interested to see um, how hard they push us. Maybe we can go into a quick test drive as well, just to get a feeling for the game. Holy bejesus. This is pushing me into the ground on the front. Okay. I would, uh, I would argue that they do indeed feel quite a lot more efficient. Um, I would also say, though, that the placement of them could be critical to change here. So, good thing we actually noticed that, because I think, especially that they're sitting that high, is kind of pushing our wheels into the ground here, which means the generator is slowing us down more than it even is already. Um, so while the generator part needs to be fixed regardless, I think what we're quickly going to do is actually redo this idea right here. So I would like to put this aside, put down the boosters first. Which makes so much more sense. Why did I have it the other way around previously? Was it for the radar, maybe? Could be. But yeah, so, um... Something like that here being more of the idea now. Um, that exposes the radar quite significantly, I'll have to say. Um, but I don't think there's really much of a choice to that. Except for doing, like, this. Which, you know... really not many attachment points it would be attached to. Let's do it that way regardless. I think that's fine. Also looks quite alright. Uh, let's do another test drive, see if that works better. Still pushing the wheels into the ground. Holy moly. Wow. You see how much the suspension actually uh, gets pushed into the ground there, right? Very nice, though. I feel like we do very much have that little extra oomph that we can use last second to actually push um, more into the enemies. So, um, yeah, I think that I'm thinking I'm happy with it. Um, kind of want to fix this part right here, especially the generator part as well. Now, I don't think that we can do that today. And I still have to think about how I want to do it. Because, of course, I do still have that other fuel tank right there, which doesn't really help. And, uh... Yeah, it's quite the complicated puzzle to solve, to be honest. So, we'll see about that. That's not something we'll take care about today. Uh, for now, let's have one battle, at least, with this uh, new variant of our wedge pill. See how the boosters do for us. Have a little bit of fun in the game. And, um... Yeah, then we'll get back, and probably next episode, then we'll get back to uh, pushing the power score maybe a bit more on the PvE build, if we can actually try that out, and 
Um, yeah, I don't know, maybe revisiting the whole generator thing on the PvP build, because it's really, really, really quite the annoyance. So, let's see if maybe we can uh, get more of an idea there, maybe... And there must be something we can do to fix that, right? If, if you've got any suggestions, of course, let me know down below. And, uh, ooh, please steer. Um, well, then we'll just go and uh, destroy a little bit of stuff around us and uh, find some people as a drill boy, I think. Uh, wow. Okay. Okay. Good stuff. Cool. I'm happy. Oh, that's not a drill boy. Oh, no, it is a drill boy. What in the world? Help. Help. There you go. Wheel's gone. Get wrecked. Wow. Um, whew. There go all my boosters, so not really the longest of trial times right there. That was spooky, though. I was followed by a drill boy rocket combination. Not, not the best feeling in the world, I'll have to say. Hello. Good day, sir. Sir, would you please thank you? Uh-oh. Oh, I got myself in a bad spot here, didn't I? Oh, I gotta get rid of the guns. I gotta get rid of the guns. Please, please, please. Shotgun, reload. Uh, or, you know, unheat yourself. Oh, thank you very much. That was freaking scary. At least my front wheels are still there, though. I have to say, this concept with hiding away the front wheels is working absolute wonders for me. I, I literally always have my steerable wheels remaining. That's absolutely amazing. That was fun, though. I think that was quite successful and fun. And, well, the boosters worked uh, until they were gone. But, um, well, kind of happy with that. But anyways, uh, more of a building episode than today. I hope you all enjoyed the episode. For now, I'll have to end it off right here, unfortunately, because the time's already over for today's episode. Um, but if you enjoyed it, as usual, make sure to hit that like button down below, please. That always helps out a ton with the discoverability on YouTube. And if you're new around here and haven't done so just yet, also please consider subscribing right down below, as well as hitting that bell icon to stay up to date on all the future upcoming episodes. But with all those things out of the way, as usual, everybody, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll catch you in the next episode very, very soon. Ciao.